Hey everyone, my name is Roy, and today I'll be showing how you can use GraphQL together with TypeScript. So the first step for today is getting a GraphQL API. And for this we'll be using Stepsend GraphQL Studio, which you can find on graphql.stepsend.com. So in here I can use multiple APIs. In example, I can combine the Practical Dev API from dev.to with GitHub by selecting GitHub here. And as you can see, this has generated some sample queries for me, which I won't be using today because we'll be going for mock data instead of real data. Because for real data, we will need API credentials, which I uh, don't want to fill in right now. You can see it generated some sample queries for me. So let's try out the first one. Let's get rid of these things and press run. So this will run my sample query and to use mock data. I can also change this. So instead of followers, I want repositories like this, and then I need to swap out some fields there. So this will give me different mocked fields like repositories instead of followers. And using this API, I can build a GraphQL, uh, I built a React application. So by going to my VS Code, which I've opened in a different tab, you can see I already put in this query here. Just to be sure, I can insert it again. Oh, this is my endpoint. So I can copy paste my query just to be sure that I have the same query. Paste it in here. Format. Also, you can see the endpoint is the same endpoint as I have in GraphQL Studio, just to be sure. Copy it, and paste it here. Now I can do um, npm start as it's a create React app. It will start my application in the browser. And I probably have already opened a tab that will have this, this application running. Let me see, it will start the development server and then it will start a local application on port 3000 as I'm using create React app. This is taking a bit longer to load than I expected. But here's the application. And as you can see, it already runs into type errors. Because I'm using TypeScript, I need to make sure that my types are actually corresponding to the data I have. So let me see what's going wrong. It is complaining about data here not existing, so probably I would just need to change this field. And if I go back to my application, you can see everything is fine. So this is the thing where I'm using TypeScript. I want to catch these errors before they reach the browser. And as you can see, I've used type any for everything. Um, but what I actually should have done is create a type for whatever I have here. And as we're using GraphQL, you can already find what this type will look like by copy pasting this part. So I would, would turn this into a TypeScript type. I would type type and response, something like this. And then to define the types, I will need to define well, this one as an object containing a name, which probably is a string, a summary, which is also a string, a bit of details, which is an object, bio, it's probably also a string, but these are all things I can verify from my GraphQL schema. Repositories then is an object again, the object there and then edges will actually be an array so what i can do here is say it's an array of type node then also close the array there and then node is an object again with id being a string a string and name also being a string so name here is string and then i can attach this response to there and then this whole party below should be able to get the type definitions. And my application should still be running fine. But as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time. Also, when I want to get other fields here, like the URL, and use the URL here as well for my href, if I do node.url here, you can see it doesn't have the type because it's saying node.url is any. Well, actually, I want to have a type for it. So I need to have my type here as well. And URL is a string. 
And now it should no longer say any, but it should say string. Uh, oh, wait, get rid of this. You can see it's saying no URL is a string. But again, if I would delete it here, it wouldn't know what the type is and I will get an error inside my code. So this is something you want to prevent. So that's why we'll be using a library called GraphQL Code Generator. And I already installed GraphQL Code Generator in my project. The only thing I need to do now, because it's already in my package so JSON, it should be here, GraphQL Code Gen CLI. What I need to do now is run GraphQL Code Generator. So I will do npx GraphQL Code Gen, and then in it, because I want to start a new configuration file for GraphQL Code Generator based on the setup of my repository. So what I want is an application built with React. It needs to know where my schema is, which is coming from Steps in GraphQL Studio. And I can just copy paste it and then put it down there. Where are your operations and fragments? They are actually inside my .psx file, which is like this. And then what I want is GraphQL or TypeScript types based on my GraphQL schema and based on my operations. It also says Apollo, but this is something I actually don't want. So I can oh, get rid of this by pressing space. And then you press enter, it will then generate all these files for me. And then it will also ask me what command I want to generate it. So I will add the command generate to my package.json file. And then I would sometimes need to install all the plugins that I have, but I already done this step. So I can just press npm run generate. And now it will generate TypeScript types based on my query and also based on my schema in a new file that will be appearing pretty soon, which is called generate.ts. So this file has type definitions for everything that is in my schema from GraphQL Studio. And it also has type definitions for my operation, which is in my app.tsx file. And I can probably find it here. So where is it? Oh, here, it's called steps and queries. So then I can get rid of this entire file. And actually just do this, make sure I import it, get an import and then save. And as you can see, the type definitions are still there, which is also pretty nice because imagine I want to get rid of URL here and I run npm run generate again. So as you can see, it now has the type for the URL because it's coming from node. But now if I regenerate my file, it actually no longer has the value for URL because it only has ID and string, which are there inside my, inside my query. So this is how you can set up TypeScript type definitions for your GraphQL API that you built with StepSet, but it will also work with any other API. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to StepSet on YouTube and also follow us on Twitter with StepSet-Dev. So I hope to see you again soon and thanks for watching.